And now some of the people who are being let back into their homes are getting police escorts. They're told they can only stay for one hour. They return to their homes only if their homes are still standing to pack up, but they're not told when they can return to their home permanently. But look at, look at these reporters who are reporting on, oh, a home has burned to the ground and the home right next to it is completely untouched, but the home on the other side burned to the ground. That middle home is fine. Really? We're allowed to go back to their homes under a police escort today. As CBS 2's Joy Benedict shows us, some found their homes still standing, but others faced a total loss. The line was long. Hi, how are you? As folks waited for a glimpse of what's left. I was resigned to losing my house, so I cried when I found out it was there. Jean Smiley stood in line almost two hours to visit her Ventura home for the first time since evacuating Monday. She, like many here, brought empty suitcases to fill with clothes and supplies. I'm going into it for some personal things like medicine, sunglasses, and um, hair dryer that works. Evacuees were only allowed in for an hour, but only if their home was still standing. As long as it's not major damage, which mine is, mine's a total loss. Jeff Marcus's home burned to the ground, so he was turned away. Trying to get up there with my adjuster to get the process started so we can rebuild. But most of these neighbors were able to board the buses and vans that shuttled them home. But the view along the way wasn't pretty. Words don't describe how, how you feel. And now you feel remorse for the, your neighbors. These are my friends, my really good friends, and they're gone. Rick Lane came to grab clothes for his family. And although he's pleased to see so many people working in his neighborhood to get the gas and power restored, he's frustrated because he doesn't know how many days he needs to pack for. I know they're working their butts off here. I can see that. But what's their time frame? What's their estimate? So far, more than 700 structures have burned in the Thomas fire. But for folks seeing their neighborhoods for the first time today, it's kind of confusing because you'll have one home that's gone, but next to it, a home that's still standing, and on the other side, yet another home destroyed. Confusing? It's confusing. It should be begging questions in people's minds, like what the hell? How does that happen? The Santa Ana winds, that's right. The Santa Ana winds, those gusts of winds, protected one home left completely untouched, but took down the other two homes on either side. Big is awful, and I feel that I'm going to be. As for Smiley, despite being against a hillside, her home had no damage at all. She just lost a few bushes and pool chairs. That melted white spot there was a, a resin shade lounge and a cushion, and that's gone. But as happy as she is, okay, so are, wait a second. To to. Um, lounge and a cushion, and that's gone. But as happy as she is. So it was a lounge chair and a cushion, and it, well, justified. It's gone. Um, really. Spot there was a, a resin shade lounge and a cushion, and that's gone. But as happy as she is, and so many are, to have homes to return to. For those who don't, this neighbor hopes they rebuild, knowing this community is still their home even without a house to live in. No one is uh, giving up. Joy Benedict, CBS 2 News. All right. You know, the obviousness of how strange things are, it's just not, a, it, 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 it's simply not getting through to Americans when we really desperately need it to get through. The link is below.